We're talking about laws of exponents. So what does that mean? Basically, it means what can we do when we see exponents? What do um, what rules do we always have to follow? So first things first, we have invisible exponents. So if you have something that's just like five, what's the invisible exponent? Well, that just means five to the first, right? Because it's five to the first would be five times itself one time, which is just five. Or if we had seven, the invisible exponent is one. Or if we just had an x, and this is where it gets tricky because people sometimes forget that. You know, 5 and 7, that kind of makes sense. But x, when you just see an x, it really is x to the first. There's just one x, right? What if you have a 0 exponent, 5 to the 0? It always equals 1. In fact, I sometimes like to draw like a big 1. And remember that 5 to the 0 is 1, 7 to the 0, 100 to the 0, x to the 0, doesn't matter what it is, anything to a 0 exponent is 1, always. Because it's basically like something times itself no times. It's weird, right? But it's 0. Okay, multiplying powers. What happens when we have something with the same base, like 5? squared times 5 to the third. Well, what, let's actually think about what that means. It means 5 times 5, because that's what 5 squared means, times 5 times 5 times 5, right? Because that's what 5 cubed means. So what is this really? Well, it means 5 to the fifth. So what's the actual rule? When we multiply two things that have the same base, we just add their exponents. So this equals 5 to the 2 plus 3, right, which is 5 to the 5th. So it works the same for uh, variables as well. So if I had x squared, whoop, wrong one, x squared times x to the 5th, let's do that, that's going to be x times x, right, times x times x times x times x times x, which equals x to the seventh, right? So we just, if we're multiplying two things with the same base, we just add their exponents. So what do you think we're going to do if we divide? Well, if I have x to the seventh over x to the third, well, that's seven of these, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and there's three of them on bottom. Well, x divided by x, right? These all cancel out because they're multiplying. How many do I have left over? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So x to the 7th divided by x to the 3rd is x to the 4th. So when we're dividing powers, we're basically just subtracting their exponents, right? Because 7 minus 3 is 4. You can see where that comes from. What about a power of a power? What if I have x to the 3rd squared? So I'm raising this to the power. So what I'm saying is I'm taking x to the 3rd, which is x times x times x, I'm squaring that. So what does that really mean? That means x times x times x times itself, right? x times x times x. So how many x's do I actually have? I actually have x to the sixth here. So when I raise a power to a power, we multiply their exponents. So this becomes x to the sixth, right? Because I have two groups. This means I have two groups of three, really, is what it means, right? And it works for any of them. What about negative exponents? What if I have 5 to the negative 1? Well, if you remember, there's a little saying, cross, uh, <laughs> cross the line, change the sign. Basically, what it means is if you have a negative exponent, it needs to go across the fraction line to make it a positive exponent. So this is the same as 1 over 5 to the first which is the same as 1 over 5, right? But what if this was 5 to the negative 2? Well, that would be 1 over 5 squared. So that would be 1 over 25, right? So I crossed the line, I changed the sign. It's the same for variables. x to the negative 3 would be 1 over x cubed. So there you go. There's all of our exponent rules.